Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I plan to land a Kerbal on the moon and bring that Kerbal back. And we've got the science data from the surface of the moon. We could also do Minmus. We've got science data from the surface of Minmus and I might as well pick that up while we're at it so that we can do that too. And maybe while we're building stuff, if it turns out that we can't do the moon, uh, if we don't have the delta V for it, we'll try Minmus, which has less delta V requirement for a landing and return. Uh, so we also have Explore Kerbin. Rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Kerbin and dock two vessels on around Kerbin. So that suggests that what we're going to do is maybe we'll launch, since we still have the pad limit of 18 tons, maybe we'll dock two parts together in order to make the mission. But do we have docking ports? <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure we don't. And it really should only give us that that mission if we have docking ports. The dock part, at least. There is a, like, condition that checks for docking ports. But right now we have none. We have not unlocked docking ports at all. We've got all this stuff in coupling. And this is one of the problems with uh, BDB, is that you get a hundred different decouplers of the same size and it's really annoying I really don't need this in my life but basically these are all tiny decouplers and we don't have any docking ports in fact if I type in docking nothing comes up so to detect tree now here in, under general construction we have a nose docking mechanism, this, you know, for the Gemini, and this is the target docking port, the Agena docking port. And so we could use those and unlock it for 45, or we could go standard and we've got under miniaturization the Clampatron Jr., then also this Clampatron Jr., apparently. Oh, there's the construction port with USI, this is the regular one. And so we've got that option. The problem is if we unlock miniaturization, we won't currently have enough science to unlock space exploration, which actually has the antennae that we want somewhere in here. Uh, somewhere in here is an antenna that actually has good range. Uh, well, that's a surface S-band antenna. We don't want that. You gotta watch out for these antennae that we can't actually use. Surface S-band antenna would not be good. This this one seems to work. It still looks like a surface antenna, frankly. But anyway, this is the one I think uh, I was looking for. And has a decent range with level 2, though we would still need to combine more than one of them, if they combine, in order to get to Duna. So, yeah, but it's an option. And it's not an option under miniaturization. So, what I think we're going to do is we're going to get general construction and do the... Gemini thing and then also get space exploration so we have that so we now have a water recycler in the pod and float in crew experiments so okay well I'm gonna try and modify the Hermes we've got new engines and everything so maybe we can improve on all the stuff let me see what we can do. Uh, it, let's see if we can do as much as possible on a single launch. Though, if we're going to have a nose cone docking port, we're probably going to... But there is that instrument section that we've been using for the probe, right? So maybe we don't need this parachute. We can use the Hermes parachute itself. Okay, so here is what I have for Hermes 2, which will attempt to land on the moon. You'll notice no landing legs, and that is because we are limited to 30 parts. So we are going to land like this on the bottom of this tank. And we're going to land with these crow engines, and the whole thing will land. And we still have a heat shield here, so it'll have to return, and we'll use the heat shield to uh, come back down. <laughs> is very very dodgy but we have a docking mechanism there to dock to another stage and that stage will push us over to the moon and hopefully get us our return so we will have to rendezvous with it twice and otherwise we have 2800 meters per second to land and uh, lift off again and maybe come back maybe this can come back without having to rendezvous again we'll see I've kept all the food water and oxygen that we have for the 30-day thing 
uh, just in case. So, uh, I mean, a trip to the moon should not take that much, but I felt like it would be prudent. And then we have, uh, so these are just the radio version of the Finch engine. Uh, um, they're called Crow. And so we've used these Finch ones before, but I decided that since I was gonna stick them on the side and land on the bottom, we didn't want that form. We just wanted this Crow form, but it's basically the same thing, same stats. And those have high reliability, just in case, because otherwise we can't do things. And the Decker also has high reliability. We used the Decker last time. And now we've got a few uh, changes here. We've increased the diameter to 1.5 meters, so we've got a Fenris fuel tank here. And then I've also unlocked these Bossert fuel tanks. They're balloon fuel tanks, supposedly, but we're using them in LH2 mode. Uh, well, LH2 slash O Hydrolox mode. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if that has any balloon benefit, if you will, as far as the mass is concerned. But they still can't have anything radially attached to them. So instead of having the, the Bossert tanks all the way, we have to have the Fenris tank down here to radially, atta radially attach the boosters. Otherwise, we you just can't attach the boosters. These don't allow radial attachment because they are balloon fuel tanks. That's their logic. And so we have this Fenris fuel tank uh, tuned to EELT to make it longer. And it has the hydrogen and oxygen as well. And then we have the boosters. And that gets us to 30 parts. So up here we are using the docking mechanism here and the recovery module. I'm well aware that we're supposed to have a nose cap here. I mean, but we have an extra decoupler here. The question is whether this thing... It has a decoupler too, but whether it decouples from the bottom or the top, I don't know. Um, I'm going to just blatantly assume that it decouples from the top. Let's just go for it, and we'll have the aerodynamic nose cone. And if it doesn't, we're going to be in big trouble. How about that? <laughs> so, we still have 30 parts. We have the aerodynamic nose cone, but we may be in big trouble. So, yeah, let's go with that theory. Um, I really don't want to put a, a one of the major Kerbals here. Um, can we hire somebody cheap? <laughs> uh, Liz! Hi Liz, you're the only pilot here. About 124,000 is hardly cheap, but um, let me have Liz do this. I'm not emotionally attached to Liz. I mean, we should rescue Kerbals. We're at the max now, but we'll have we'll have Liz go up on this. Uh, but we won't launch Liz yet. We want to launch the thing that Liz has gone to ron rendezvous with. And uh, our center of mass is bouncing up and down. Nope, now it isn't. Interesting. I guess it bounces up and down because we don't know whether there's a Kerbal on board. And then once there's a Kerbal on board, it stops bouncing. I don't know. Okay, so well, we'll be throttling down the Prometheus engine, which we used in the previous video with Hydro Locks and everything. Uh, before, uh, while the boosters are on and then throttle it up. So we'll get some extra benefit from that, but we'll have to see. I don't even know if we're going to be able to get to orbit without using some of the fuel from the lander stage. So that's an interesting question. I'm gonna save this and we are going to build the thing that it is going to rendezvous with. Okay, so here is the docking target. And I've called it Bedecker 1 because we're using the Bell docking port, which I assume is what they call the Agena. And we are using the Decker liquid engine. So it's sort of a mix of things. And I've really gotten it tight in the limit here. And we've got uh, nearly 18 tons. I had to put the uh, shape the fairing very specifically to get under 18 tons. And uh, you can see we're very close to the height limit and very close to the part limit as well. So we've got the docking target, we've got a remote controller. Uh, we've got these solar panels that are also antennae. And I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but uh, uh, it'll work for around low carbon orbit anyway. Uh, we've had to get these, uh, well, we didn't unlock them. We had these control jets. The thing is, uh, we have these other RCS ports here, but they're really expensive. Uh, 620 a piece and we'd have to put four of them so that's you know a lot and they have the same efficiency as this one but this these are only 70 uh, granted they're only two-way but these are only two-way as well uh, these there's a lot of stuff going on on these but uh, 
yeah, I didn't see the benefit of doing anything but using these control jets. Uh, 0.5 is more than enough at thrust as it is. Otherwise, um, you know, we could... I mean, there are RCS ports in it, uh, all that. We just need them for the docking. Uh, oh, I mean, I could dock without them, but it's nice to have them. Uh, I unlocked this Bell equipment rack, but it's pretty expensive, 1235 and we already had this upper stage kit, and that's only 460. It has the RCS built in, the mod propellant. We've got 10 units of mod propellant here. And it's got little ports around, it's got RCS. I don't know if it's good for docking, but just in case I've added some of the control jets down here, it's still cheaper than, uh, you know, all the control jets combined plus this part with the fuel is still cheaper than one of these equipment racks. So, yeah. I decided that that was the best thing to do, and we will see. So that gives us our mod propellant. Otherwise, we don't have any small mod propellant tanks, right? So uh, this our smallest tanks. We've sorted by mass here, and uh, this fuel tank doesn't even have mod propellant in. Uh, this Daleth one has 91. Now this balloon tank has 200. Uh, this doesn't have anything. I don't even know why it's under fuel tanks, to be honest. Uh, but uh, this Alpha can have 65, you know, and so this has also 65 mob propellant. So, yeah, no small mob propellant tanks available. It is already sorted by mass. So, yeah, um, these are our best bet for a little bit of mob propellant for docking. And, of course, the mission also has mob propellant, but it doesn't have RCS. Well, it has RCS ports on the pod, but not otherwise. Now, is this going to be enough Delta V? I have no idea. We've put another balloon tank here to extend it uh, so that it didn't exceed the height. Otherwise, uh, we were previously using the EELT configuration here, but that would make it too tall. So that's why I added that tank and made this the ELT version to make it shorter. And otherwise, we've got the two boosters, and that is what this looks like. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, this is our situation. Uh, okay, well, uh, let me just pick up the contracts, make sure that we've got everything that we want. Well, we've got some extra launch sites there. Maybe I'm using the wrong launch site. Incidentally, Kerbal Constructs just doesn't work. I've tried different versions of it. I've tried, uh, you know, the latest version, I've tried previous versions, but Control k doesn't pop up with the Kerbal Constructs thing, and it's not KSP 1.12. Incidentally, uh, because I have used Kerbal Constructs in KSP 1.12 with RO. Uh, so there's some other mod that I'm using here that I don't use in RO that's interfering with it. But I don't know what that is. And considering most of the mods I'm using here are different, it's a little bit hard to tell. So anyway, uh, Explore Kerbin is what we want. We want to do this rendezvous. Okay. And otherwise, we've picked up both exploration contracts. So, I mean, uh, both uh, science data contracts from the surface. So, yeah. Now, I'm aware that we can't actually EVA the Kerbals. Um, maybe we should allow for that. And, uh, uh, sorry, unlock the astronaut complex. Can perform EVAs, but we don't have a ladder, and we don't have the part count to put a ladder, but the Kerbal could potentially EVA up into the pod, unless JNSQ modifies the EVA pack so that they can't use the EVA pack on the surface of the moon. That would be a nasty thing to find out at the end, isn't it? But... Let's just try the mission out and see what happens first. And we'll think about the EVAs later. This is highly experimental right now. So first, the Bedecker, and we'll see how that goes. We already have hydrogen boil off, and this is why I'm not using hydrogen on the upper stage. We do have cryogenic engines for the upper stage, you know, that would fit. But I was just too afraid of boil off, so I just left it off and used the Decker instead. Otherwise, we have much more efficient cryogenic engines. Anyway, throttle up, SAS on, and actually throttle down, because we'll have high booster energy. And launch. 
Though we do need the engine to light, because otherwise I don't know how much control these have without having RCS thrusters. And we sure don't have a whole lot of uh, reaction wheel control with this. We only have a little probe core. I feel like I should change the glow on the ocean. Okay, bottle up. I, I don't like the the tint on the ocean that they have with the sun. Well, without uh, Kerbal Constructs working, I can't do anything about detailing this launch site either. I could turn it into Cape Canaveral if I wanted to. But I need Kerbal Constructs working. Oh, we're, we're going down like that. We'll need to keep some pitch up here. We've got a very heavy upper stage right now. So if this all doesn't work, we'll unlock the pad and remove some restrictions and hope that that will help. Okay, separation and ignition. And, uh, fairings, actually. There we go. Uh, okay, I didn't want to go back down. Skirting it close again here. Uh, Okay, <laughs> yeah, considering it close does lead to that sort of problem. Alright, so 80 kilometers should be fine. And we have a high apoapsis, which I guess might make it easier for rendezvous if we figure that out. But uh, we've got nearly 3,000 meters per second, so this alone could certainly go over to the moon. Uh, the question is whether it can push the pod as well. And we will find that out. We need to do a rendezvous and a docking around Kerbin, as it says. So, let's launch Liz. Okay, Liz Kerbin. Interesting hairdo. Okay. Alright, and we've got the little nose cap. Hopefully that can actually be separated. Uh, SAS on. Bottle a little bit. And... We might as well target the target. Though, MechJeb doesn't show me anything anymore these days. That would be helpful if it showed me something like, oh, well, there's some rendezvous info. I guess we can use that. Alright. I should customize my windows, but we won't do that right now. Okay, so... Go! And Godspeed Liz, the Kerbal I'm not emotionally attached to. And separation. Oop, wiggly. That is a very weak plume. <laughs> it's not a very inspiring plume right there for this engine. Can't have everything. Good efficiency and good plumes, you know. We're a little bit shallow again. Uh, okay, ignition. We will need some of the lander stage to finish a little bit, I think. I should have tossed it up a little bit steeper initially. And on the bright side, uh, well, we're really tight just like the last one. On the downside, uh, this is probably not the most efficient thing. Okay, these little guys. Technically our lander engines. I mean, this whole business is rather ambitious considering we haven't done a flyby or a in-orbit thing with a Kerbal around the moon in the first place. I mean, maybe, just maybe, we should just go to Minmus. But that's a longer trip too, we have to think about our life support. I don't know how irradiated this is going to be either. Okay, I really didn't want to go into the atmosphere again. Okay, hold on a sec. I'm gonna try and decouple the nose cone. Undock. Okay, nose cone is off. But it went off prograde, so it might have made orbit accidentally. Okay, we are in a lower orbit. Let's get the solar panels out. 
Well, we, we are recharging enough, and it's pretty far ahead of us, but let's see how we can catch up. Okay, I'm gonna go to the Bidecker to do the rest of the rendezvous. It always gives a little puff of the engine when we turn to them. Oh, this has the weakest reaction wheel ever. Okay, well that's the rendezvous. Okay, it's showing the... Okay, now it's showing the right thing, but... Alright, where are we? That's a lot of clouds. Oh, there it is. Okay. Maybe we don't have all those fancy features some of the other probe cores eventually have. We should have probably waited on that. Ah, uh, yeah, it was too early. I should have waited until we were within render range and everything. Okay, now I'll shut that down. Yeah, this help out a little bit. Okay, to about that tune. And if it could point at us, or point at the target. Okay. I should tune down those RCS thrusters, but... Um, oh, we have backward thrusters down on this thing. That's how we have backward thrusters. I was wondering where they were. Unfortunately, this thing doesn't have forward-facing ones, but so we don't want to slow down too much. Okay, let's adjust the turn here. And I know I've, I can use fine controls. In fact, I'll do that. I've got caps lock on now. Uh, we're a little bit off, but we've got magnetism. All right, RCS is already off. Okay, so let's switch the unrelated engines off for now. I don't know if we can do fuel crossfeed into this. If we should like to do that. Let's see. Uh, but we haven't unlocked the... Uh, yeah, we haven't unlocked the things for that. And we also don't have fuel lines, incidentally. Okay, so this is our situation. And yeah, well, we should have accomplished that. Yes, we accomplished the Explore Kerbin thing. Now, let me just do a check. We, we probably are tight as far as trying to land on the moon is concerned. But what about Minmus? Could we land on Minmus? We'll need a mid-course adjustment. I don't think we can do an off-plane transfer. The question is, how long does it take to get to Minmus? And what are our supplies like? So we will do a mid-course adjustment here. I have to check what our Delta V is. It says three days. Uh, and you know what? I'm gonna go into settings and change the kind of day that we get, I think. Uh, well, I only have an option between Earth time and Kerbin time, so I'll stick to Earth time given those two. So basically, what I'm gonna assume is that 30 days of supplies for Kerbalism, this will take six to seven of them. So, all right, that's fine. And what is our delta V right now? That's something we need to find out. So let's switch off the mob propellant engine. Get the decker back on. And the way it makes the ignition sound always makes me nervous. Okay, it's got 1,870. So, what I'm thinking is, we may strand Liz, but um, what I'm thinking is, that we are going to try to get over there to Midmus with that. There's no way... I'm not confident that this can land on the surface of the moon with the amount of Delta V we have here, but maybe Midmus. Maybe Midmus. So, does this have... It says 1870 there. Can it get us over there no, and no, capture? Why Why can Mechjib not have the maneuver node? editor at this point. We've unlocked things. We've unlocked this maneuver node thing. We don't need the rendezvous thing anymore. Okay, well that's pretty tight into Minmus. And then capture. 
256. So, I mean, it's not going to be able to do it on its own. We'll be spending... Oops, I didn't want to time warp. Uh, we're going to expend, be expending this on the transfer. We could probably help ourselves out by dumping that mod propellant. Mod propellant should draw from over in the pod as well, potentially, right? Okay, we've got to try to go to Minmus. I don't know how irradiated Liz is going to get, but uh, that is the plan. And maybe we should unlock the ability for Liz to EVA out. Because Minmus, I think we can do the jetpack with, maybe. Oh, let, let, let's make sure we're controlling from the right thing. Control from here. Aha. So I'm gonna activate this upper stage kit again to dump some of the mop repellent. We're not expecting the pod to re-rendezvous with this stage. And it's using some out of the pod as well. Oh, or not. I wonder where it's getting the extra bit there. Now it's using some of the pod. Now we're a little bit early. Our Delta V isn't reading as much as I thought it was going to be. I think it's lied to me. Oh, it's not including this fuel. I sure hope it gets that fuel. I think that's reading that it has that fuel. We'll see. But that Delta V reading is all over the place. Okay, yeah, it's taking from that fuel tank. Not this fuel tank though, right? Okay. Now it's reading a lot of Delta V. I'm so confused. Can I just lock this? It, okay, it was it was reading that delta V. Let's not have that. Now it's reading too little again. We're all over the place. Okay, well it turns out that stage was not enough. It's still reading four meters per second. So confusing. Okay, well we're going to have to go over. Who found it? It is a derelict, alas. And this maneuver was reset. Let's just go prograde. Cancel all the maneuvers. Activate. <laughs> it doesn't show the two engines. There's so many buggy things. Makes me sad. Okay. Get these unlocked again. And go. I just have to eyeball it since I lost my node. We're gonna get Liz to Midmus, darn it. One way or another. Got full ablator just in case. Oh, he got the Hermes heat shield this time. Meant for this capsule. You know, it occurs to me. Uh, we could eject off. Let's test that. Um. I'm gonna go normal. We gotta have another piece of space debris. But we don't need the docking mechanism anymore. So the question is whether this recovery module, the decouple, actually decouples off the top thing. It does. Okay, that that's a load off my back. Uh, otherwise we can't decouple that. And I was worried that it might decouple itself and then our parachute would be gone. <laughs> That wouldn't be any good either. Alright, so we're good on that. Continuing. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, let's go with that. Let's plot the mid-course adjustment, if it'll allow us to. Costing us a little bit more. Well, now there's the radiation belts. I didn't put any extra shielding on this. Let's see what it says. We'll hopefully be passing by, passing through them real quickly. Extreme radiation. Here we go. 1%. 1% stress as well. Okay, okay, we're getting to the node. We're only at 3% uh, radiation right now, anyway. Let's see. 
We are that far away from Kerbin. Liz has definitely set a record for distance from Kerbin. They better give us some Kerbal rescue contracts after this. Okay, ignition. Okay, uh, I'm using too many burns, I'll stop. <laughs> uh, we got 105 ignitions left, but still, I think I've done enough. Okay, so... Yeah, let's... We've, we're getting sunlight, we're getting power. And Liz is on Liz's way. We are currently here, and the inner belt is like that, so way past the inner belt already. The outer belt's like that, and the magnetopause, we're practically out of the magnetopause too. So we're basically facing interplanetary space levels of radiation, and Liz only has 3% radiation, so no biggie right now. And we've got 30 days, and Liz is going to arrive there and uh, uh, multiply that by 2, so let's say 8 days. Free return in 13 days, so that's, I mean, certainly within our supply budget, if we needed to come back. Alright, but as you can tell, I'm going to wrap it up here, and we'll leave it on a cliffhanger for Liz. So next time, we will see what happens with Liz and her trip to Minmus. We have satisfied the rendezvous contract and hopefully we'll get more contracts related to rendezvous and dockings in the future. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.